So the first thing we want to really get down is what is a relation? And uh, this is the key concept of this lesson. It is relations and functions, but you got to understand what a relation is first. So a relation simply is a set of ordered pairs, a set of ordered pairs. And um, I know what a set is, so like a grouping of, and then ordered pairs. If you don't remember what those are, do you remember that one ordered pair would be in parentheses separated by a comma, and you have your x number and you have your y number? So that's what an ordered pair is. So what do you think a set of ordered pairs would be? Multiple. Yeah, it's multiple of those. So this is how you designate a set of ordered pairs, or what we call a relation. Um, does anyone know what this symbol right here is? So it's not a parenthesis, it's not a bracket, but it's a, I think I heard it, it's, yeah, it's a brace, and, it's, and we're going to put a set of braces. And so you put your ordered pairs, you separate them by commas, and you can have um, many ordered pairs. That's what a relation looks like. It's a set of ordered pairs, and that's just three of them, but you can have more, or you can have fewer than that. <clears throat> that's a relation. Is that pretty tough? Yeah. I hope not. I hope it's just a basic concept. That's what a relation is. Um, let's go ahead and get a relation. So uh, a, relation a relation set up here. So can someone just give me any ordered pair? Just give me any ordered pair. Nothing too complicated, though, for your own good and for mine. Chelsea. Two and three. Two and three? Okay, so I'm going to put my brace, two, comma, three. Okay, give me another order pair. Somebody, you can go positive or negative. Um, you could go fraction and decimal, but just to make it easy, we'll stay away from those. Yep. Negative one and seven. <clears throat> Negative one and seven. Let's get one more, maybe. Just one more order pair. Nick? Uh, you said one and five? One and five. Um, now, if you notice, I'm, I'm going to make a little confession here. Some of my braces are really good. Some of them are not. Can you tell the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, yep. I am proud of this brace. It's very nice. I think I, I like it. This one's, this one's okay. This one got better. I don't know what I was doing right there. So I'm not judging you on your braces, but um, try to make them at least look something <laughs> like a brace. So this is really good. This one's uh, okay. All right. So here I have my set of order pairs. What is this called right here? If it's a set of order pairs, it's also called a relation. relation. Okay, so can you guys have that on your paper? And then I'm going to move on to this next part. We also have two concepts called domain and range. So a lot of terms in this uh, lesson, but then we're going to use them the rest of the chapter. So domain and range, two concepts relating to a relation. So the domain is also a set. It is the set of x values of a relation. The set of x values of a relation. And then what do you think the range would be? Yep, it's the set of y values. of a relation. Okay, and I hope you're starting to see a little parallel. If I designate a set, so if I have a set of y values or a set of x values or a set of ordered pairs, what symbols do I have to use, you think? Symbols. So let's see if I can kind of braces. 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 Good braces. All right. So this is how you would show your domain. I would put the capital letter, letter D, and I do my my brace right there. Okay. Do you guys remember that set of ordered pairs we wrote above or the previous page? What were all the x values of those three ordered pairs? Do you guys remember what the three x values were? 
2, negative 1, and 1? I'm going to write it negative 1, 1, 2. How do you think we need to write it? In order from least to greatest. So I put negative 1, 1, and 2. That's my domain. Is that my set of x values for that relation that we wrote up there? Yep, so that's my range, uh, domain. And then my range, what are the y values for that um, relation? What were the y values? 3, 5, 7. 3, 5, 7. And that's an order, thankfully. So 3, 5, 7. So that's your domain and range. That's it. Is that pretty tough? No, it's just look and order them up for the x values and for the y values. OK, so domain is a set of x values in a relationship and then, or relation, excuse me, and the range, the set of y values in a relation. You guys OK with these terms? Really? Good. Uh, I want you to put your pencil down or pen down and don't look at your notes. And I'm going to ask some of you which, which uh, definitions fit what term or vice versa. By the way, when I ask you, um, I can see your eyes. And so sometimes if I ask you a question and you're doing this, I can tell you're looking at your notes. So try not to do that. If you need to cover it, fine. OK, what is a relation, Laura? What? So good. It's a set of ordered pairs. Ordered pairs. All right, nice. What's the domain, Rachel? <coughs> good. The set of x values. What is the range, Parker? The set of y values. The set of y values. Amazing. You guys, get on that. Really? Set Some of you seem very confident. Good, because I'm going to ask you. What is Alyssa? The set of y values called. The range. Nick, what is a set of ordered pairs called? Pairs? Relation. Relation. <laughs> Josh, what's a set of x values called? The domain. The domain. Sarah Harris, give me all three uh, definitions with those terms. Go ahead. Uh, I think that was good, Sarah. Okay, uh, you passed. Annie, what's the domain? What's the domain? Uh, the set of x values. Coal range. Set of y values. Should be like six. Betsy. Set of ordered pairs is called. Uh, Good. Okay. Are you guys okay with those? Because they're going to ask you what's the domain. You're like, I don't even know what domain. Is. Well, I hope you know it's a set of x values, and all those other ones all apply. Okay. Look at the bottom page 372, because <clears throat> it's going to help you out with your homework. Okay. On the table, they give you negative three one, um, zero negative two and 4, negative 2. OK, this is called a table. And you guys have seen this many times, so this should be new. But can anyone from this table give me your set of ordered pairs? Peter knows. Sarah knows. Nick knows. Anybody else? Mandy, what's your set of ordered pairs here? Um, so if I want your set of ordered pairs, I want. Oh, okay. Um, negative three and one. Mm -hmm. And then zero and negative two. Uh huh. Okay, is that a set of ordered pairs right there? That's also known as a? Relation. Yeah, I think I heard it. Yeah, most of you said it. Relation. Here it is. What's your domain, Sarah Curtis? Um, it's negative 3, 0, negative 2, negative 
Josh, what's your range? Uh, that would be negative two, negative two and one. Negative two and one, good. When you have one of the elements in the range or the, in the domain, and I didn't go over this, so if you have it repeating, you just write it once. So you see here I put negative two once and then one. That's how we write it. You guys okay with that? Okay, look at the graph that they gave you next to that table. Can anyone give me the ordered pairs in that graph? What are the ordered pairs in that graph? Peter? Negative three, one. Zero, negative two. Four, negative two. Do you guys see those? So can you write a set of ordered pairs from a table and from a graph? Yes. And then what's the domain? And let's see if I'm going to get some. Scott, what's the domain in that graph? So what, are this, what is the set of x values? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the graph at the bottom of page 372, it says the word graph, and then it has a ordered pair. Or, sorry. Oh, this one. Yeah. Oh, That's okay. So what is what is the set of x values? Negative 3, 0, 4. Negative 3, 0, 4. Good. What's the range, Jake? Uh, <coughs> negative 2 and 1. Negative 2 and 1. Do you guys see that? Can you do that from either the table or from the graph? Yeah? No? Okay. So I'm going to test you. I'm not going to go through example number one because um, I think you guys can do it. On page 375, I want you guys to do number number nine. I want you to give me the order set of ordered pairs, then the domain, then the range. Three things on number nine. Give me the set of ordered pairs, give me the domain, give me the range on number nine. So the ordered pairs, I know it's kind of funny, the ordered pairs don't have to be in a certain order, mm -hmm. but the domain does and the range does. Least or greatest for the domain and range. Ordered pairs do not. Okay, who can give me the relation? Um, Davis, what's the relation to number nine? And sorry, what's the last one? Uh, super close, zero. Mm. So you went down one. So, negative one. Okay, so I have negative two, one, negative two, one, um, zero, negative one, and two, two. And these don't have to be in order. So you could have put this order pair here and vice versa. You could switch them around. But the domain range had to be in order. Okay, who can give me the domain? Okay, Josh? Um, two, uh, negative two. Zero and two. Good. In order, it's negative two, zero, and two. Good. The range. Um, Murphy, can you give me the range? <coughs> All right. So, uh, the range is negative two, negative two, and one. So the set of y values. Yeah. So, mm, mm -hmm. What would be next? Two or one comes next? One and then two. Okay, if you want to do it in order, we'll do negative one, one, and two. How many of you got those three parts? 
Okay, so maybe some of you are still working. That's okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, so if you know the y, like a set of y values, it's on the uh, y axis, uh huh? Axis, and if it's x, it's on the x axis. But if what if it's like, because that one works more in the middle, you know? Like oh, I see. Uh, for the domain range you're thinking of, okay. In order, in order to do the domain range, um, best I think. Not only way, but the best way is to get those ordered pairs first. Could you get these three points? Mm -hmm. So then all I do is I look for the domain. I look at these three numbers. I'm like, all right, which one would come first? They get two, then zero, then two. So I write that. For the range, I just look at those three numbers, which one comes first, negative one, one, and two. Okay. So yeah, that's going to help you out. Mm -hmm. okay, I was confused. I thought I had to look at the graph. Yeah, you do. Look at the graph to get these. The domain and range. I thought I had to look at the graph. You could. You could if you want to. So like on the domain, if I'm looking at the graph, I'm looking, all right, what are the x values that are represented uh, for number 9, right? It'd be negative 2, 0, and 2. But if you didn't look at the graph, this should give that to you anyway. So right, negative 2, 0, and 2. So you can look at the graph for the domain range, but you have to look at it for the ordered pairs. You have to. So I'll give you, I'll give you guys another chance on that as well. Okay, how many of you are okay with the domain range and set of order pairs? At least pretty well, like pretty good on it. Okay, each one of these numbers in the domain is called an element of the domain, and each one of these numbers in the range is called an element of the range. Okay, please get that word element. Um, what's this called? I know it's two, but what is it called? An element of the, or you could say an X element of the domain or whatever you want to call it, but get that word element. Okay, the last concept we're going to get through is this concept of what is a function. Uh, I think some of you maybe aren't super sure about it, but I think you have dealt with it. I think you dealt with it this way. You guys remember something like that? The function, the function box or machine. Someone said, I don't know what it was, like x plus 3. You put in x values and you get some y values out, something like that. You guys remember that? No? If you don't remember it, it's a machine. And uh, basically what you do is you put numbers into this, and you get numbers that come out of it. We're not going to do it that way because um, uh, we're, we're, I think we're getting to the point where we can think of it more abstractly. So we're get, our minds can think better through that. But this is what you have dealt with in the past, possibly. The last class said they did it, but um, maybe... Uh, it's just how you remember it or not. Okay, but what's a function? Can you guys look on page 373? <clears throat> Can someone read for me the definition of a function? Okay, Peter? A function is a relation in which each element of the domain is shown with exactly one element of the range. Okay, so a function is a relation in which, in which each element of the domain <clears throat> excuse me, is paired with exactly one element in the range. And that's something I want to get. Um, I'm going to put a function is a special type of relation. It's a special type of relation. So is a function a relation? Yes. Yes. Is a function always a relation? Is a function always a relation? Yes, because a function is a special type of relation. It's always a relation. Is a relation always a function? No. No, is a relation sometimes a function? Yes. So you guys see that logic and that definition there? A function is always, always, always a relation, but not every relation is a function. It doesn't go uh, back and forth. Okay. And then this definition, which is the hardest concept of this lesson, to really get down. Is everyone okay up to this point, though, with what um, a relation is, domain, range, and function so far? You guys okay with that? This next part is the toughest part. Okay, I'm going to write it as <coughs> each x value. So it's a little different than what they put, but it's uh, hopefully helpful. Each x value has exactly one y value. 
each x, x value has exactly one y value. So write that down and I'll show you what, what we mean so far. Okay. <coughs> um, did you have a question, Peter? Oh, yeah, you may. All right, let me go back to the uh, previous um, order of parents. Okay, ready, guys? Look at my relation. Okay, I want to determine whether it's a function or not. So this is what I do. Um, each element in the domain should have only one element in the range or only have one y value. So let's see. Negative 3. What's its y value? Yeah, 1. It has 1. What about 0? What's its y value? 4. What's its y value? Okay. <clears throat> this is where I want to think about it. Negative 3 has only one y element paired up with it, right? It's 1. You guys okay with that? So far it's a function. But now when I look at this, I have to think, is it function or not? 0. Does it have exactly one y value attached to it? So answer that question, yes or no. Does 0 have exactly one y value attached to it? Yes. 4. Does 4 have exactly one y value attached to it? Yes. yes. Does each x value only have one y value attached to it? Yes. So you know what kind of relation this is? It is a, it's a function. You're going to have to say, it's going to say determine whether it's a function or not. So isn't like every relation function? Like Doesn't it seem like that? Yeah. Let's go, how about this? Can we keep going through examples? Yeah. Let's go to the, the, the next one we went over. Okay, looking at this x value, does it only have one y value to it? Yeah. Yep, it has that one. Does this x value only have one y value attached to it? Good. This x value only has one y value to it? Mm -hmm. What kind of relation is it? It's a function. Man, this is easy, isn't it? You just kind of look at it, do it. Okay. You want one that's not a function? Okay. Uh, let's look at... <clears throat> okay. Um, example 2A. <clears throat> example 2A. Um, they give you what at the beginning? Look at the top. What is that thing called? That box up there is called a? It's a table. Yeah, it's a table. We're not sure it's a function or not, but it's definitely a table. We're going to determine whether it is a function table in just a bit. Look at that table, and without graphing it, you can determine whether it's a function or not. Okay, look at the x value of 6. Does it only have one y value? Look at it. Look at the whole table. Look at the table, though. Look at the whole thing and then answer that question. Does the x value of 6 only have one y value? Somebody explain their no because I thought, yeah, 6 has 0. Well, um, there are two 6s in there. Oh. And they're both not paired with 0. Oh. So you mean the x value of 6 has a 0 and it has a negative 1? So is it a function? No, it's not a function anymore. So let me, sh let me show you that again. Let me kind of visualize it for some of you. Here are my x values. Here are my y values. So you have 6, 0. What are the other pairs? 3, 8. 3, 8. 6, negative 1. Sorry? Negative 2, 3. Okay, here are my ordered pairs. Um, the 6, the x value 6, only give off exactly one y value. And the answer is no, because look at 6. What does it give off? It gives off 0 and negative 1, not a function. It's not a special type of relation. It is uh, just a relation, normal as we'll get. Look at B. This is a tough one. Does each x value only give off exactly one y value? And this is, you got to think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, which one? B. 
B on example two. So we're on example two B. Yes. 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 Sorry. Hello. Hi. Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. Hi. Oh, Parker, you're dismissed. <laughs> Surprise. Okay. Um, so the question was, does each x value only give off one y value? And the answer is what? 17 to 39 odd. <laughs> and then 47 to 49, pages 375 to 377. Yes, I can. 17 to 39 odd. And then 47 to 49, pages 375 to 377. You're welcome. Hmm. Okay, anyway, that's a spoiler alert, by the way, right? Oh, man. Anyway, uh, a B, if I'm looking at that, every X value, does it give off only one Y value? And the answer is, come on, give it to me. Yes. 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 It's a function. So B is a function. Where is the part where we're kind of wondering? Where were you kind of wondering about it? Because there is one spot where it's like, wait, are you sure about that? Chelsea? Um, doesn't negative 3 give off positive 1? And then 0 gives off positive 1? But the question was the question was not, does every y value have one x value? It's how, does every x value have one y value? It doesn't go back and forth. So b is a, a function. But you know what? Is there a visual way to do this? Because it's kind of tough, isn't it? kind of like hard to like, ah, what are you saying? Okay. Underneath that example, do you guys see where the bull type term that says vertical line test? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's my favorite test because a vertical line could be a pencil, a marker. Uh, it could be a ruler. It could be a line that you imagine. Here's what the vertical line test does for us. Okay. Um, on example 2A, do you guys see where they graphed those points? You see those graphs? Those points, you guys see it? Example 2A, you guys looking at it? Okay, look at, uh, take your pencil, and I want you to run it alongside that graph. Just run it left to right on that graph, just like they do with that ruler. You see how that ruler's moving left to right? Um, okay, but it's on example 2A. Does your ruler pencil line, does it ever hit two points at once? Two or more points at once on 2A. It does. Whoa, it does. If it passes two or more points, it failed the vertical line test, which makes A not a function. Wait, isn't that what we said? You could just do it with your pencil. Uh, but look at B. You see where they put the points? Okay, does it pass the vertical line test? Yes. So guess what? What kind of relation is that? a function. That's how you can do it visually. Look at the bottom of the page. Do you guys see that uh, graph that's underneath example two? Does that pass the vertical line test? Yes. So what kind of relation is that? Function. Turn the page 374. Example three. Look at the first graph on the left. Does it pass the vertical line test? No, it hits many places at one time when you move that pen or line, so it's not a function. What about the second graph? Yes. yes. You see how easy this is? Isn't that kind of nice? Okay. Look at number nine on the next page. Function or not? Yes. It is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Number ten, function or not? It is, because if you draw that, if you move that line across, it doesn't hit more than one point at once. By the way, we're talking about a line. We mean a line. So is my pen thicker than an actual line? Yes. Yeah, but if it was just like a, a straight line that went through, it would not pass more than one point. Yeah, just left to right. Just left to right. Good question. Number 13, function or not? No. Not a function, because it hits four points at once. 14, 
It is a function. How many of you like the vertical line test? Like, think it's pretty easy? I think it's pretty easy. But are they all graphs that they give to you? No. So you have a couple options. On number 12, do you guys see number 12 on page 375? Do they give you the graph? You can either graph it or you can imagine the graph and see, does it pass that line test? What do you think about 12? Good. And see, you have to think of it from the definition or from the vertical line test. Yeah, number 12 would be this. If I kind of sketch that graph. Number 12 would have two points, 0, 4. So 0, 4 would be somewhere here. 0, 8 would be right here. Would that pass the test? Mm -hmm. Nope. So that one would not be a function. Does it mean you can't put the same like, number or like This is, yeah, this is where I'm going to give you, want, ready for a tricky problem, guys? I want you to determine if this next relation is a function. So here it is. Function. Yes. No. Yes. Oh, it is. split. We got a split here. How many of you say yes? It's a function. How many of you say no? It can't be a function. Okay. Um, somebody from the yes side, tell me why it's a function. Because um, I, I kind of can see, I can see it both ways. Uh, yeah, Annie. Um, because negative two, there's two of them, but they both oh. have. Like if I graph this one, negative 2, 2 would be like right here. And then the other negative 2, 2 would be like here. And I know it's not the scale, but they'd be the same point. Uh, but look at this guy right here. Ooh. Uh, it'd be all the way over there. Oh, OK. So you see how you can determine it by looking at it? OK, I'm going to throw you one more and see if you guys get it. I'm just going to change. I yep. it was the uh, OK. I Uh, negative 2, 2, let's just say it's here. Negative 2, 2 would be right there. Negative 3, 0 oh, would be right here. And 4, 2 would be right here. Does it pass the line test? Yep. So it is a function. You guys see it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to change one thing on that um, relation. And tell me what it, if it does anything here and why. One thing. Function or not? What? It was a function just a mo moment ago. Why is it not a function, Murphy? Because it would be um, like a negative and negative two. Yeah. Um, yeah. How many of you agree? Negative. Yeah. It's hard to say, but you got it. Negative two, two is right here, right? Where's negative two? Negative two. Oh, oh man, and no longer a function. Do you guys get that? You could do it visually if you really need that graph. You could sketch it, or you could do it by looking at the numbers, and that also helps out. You, you, you should know how to do it both ways, but you'll get practice tonight. All right, you know what your homework is? Yeah, so everything is not good. 17 to 39 odd, 47 to 49 pages. Very good, almost there. 17 to 39 odd. 47 to 49, and that's, I, I forgot the previous. said them so many times. Uh, I could check on that in just a moment. Goodbye, Swivel.